Thank you very much, uh, Theodore, and uh, thank you for hosting this uh, event, even though during this time uh, we have this COVID virtual uh, discussion. Um, I, I was just looking back, and I think this is the fourth year we're presenting, and I'm very happy that we're still in the international oil and gas uh, sector of your conference. Um, and I'm really pleased uh, this year, since we met last year, we've added two more uh, quality assets to our portfolio, so we are now uh, a truly an international oil and gas producer. Um, for those of you who know Maha since before, we sort of live by two main strategies. and. Uh, uh, those strategies really are, um, uh, first, this is that we're not an exploration company. So we live by this, uh, what I call a 50-40-10 rule, where we try to pool 50% um, of our assets to be low risk uh, producing assets. 40% uh, of our asset portfolio should be uh, appraisals slash development uh, projects. And then, of course, everybody wants to dream a little bit and you need to have some blue sky. So we do uh, include about 10% uh, for near field or it, it close by expiration uh, assets. And we'll, we'll go into these assets uh, in a little bit more detail. Um, but before doing so, uh, the other main part of our strategy is what I call our three-legged stool. So we want to be diversified into three separate jurisdictions. Uh, these jurisdictions should be uh, geographically different and um, uh, pr primarily to, to uh, address political and potential jurisdictional uh, economic risk. We've seen in, in my career, we've seen uh, tax laws change uh, or tax laws introduced uh, on short notice into jurisdictions, so, uh, which could be quite damaging to a, um, a sort of single asset company. Um, so I believe that we've 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 completed the three-legged stool strategy to our uh, to 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 our company. Uh, so Maha Energy, we were founded in 2013. We're a fairly young uh, um, player on the market. We listed right smack in the middle of the Brexit days of 2016, and I'm very proud to say that uh, our team migrated to the main board in Stockholm here at the end of last year, uh, and we're now listed on Nasdaq Stockholm. Uh, our market cap is uh, actually a little bit over 1.5 billion sec today. We're about 75 employees. And on the right-hand side, you can see how the share development uh, has has progressed uh, for the last 12 months. Uh, you can see, uh, like most of uh, our peers, we fell off a cliff there in early March. Uh, we have recovered to about two-thirds of what the uh, share price was before the pandemic really got its grip. So turning to the assets that we have on an international scale, we are uh, present on uh, four, uh, sorry, three continents. Uh, the T field, which is our cash cow in Brazil, is onshore. We have 100%. It's light oil. We're currently producing about 3,500 BOEs, and we're very rapidly going to our target of 5,000 BOEs per day, uh, to about 10%. Uh, gas there. Our 2P reserves are just over 22 million uh, BUEs. And this uh, asset falls right smack in the middle of our, our low sort of 50% low risk, uh, high um, uh, cash generating assets that we'd like to keep as our sort of foundation to grow on. Uh, if we stay in that same bracket, we're going to skip down to the Illinois Basin. Um, we added this asset at the Right, right in the middle as the pandemic hit last year. Uh, this is a very uh, low risk, uh, low risk subsurface play, right smack in the middle of um, United States, yeah, also onshore. Uh, we hold uh, about 96% working interest uh, across several assets. Um, three producing reservoirs, stacked reservoirs, separate and independent. And this is truly an oil pr uh, price play. Uh, at 60, I saw WTI was just hitting $61 per barrel here uh, a few minutes ago. So um, th this is an asset where we will continue to grow. Um, and uh, as long as oil prices hang in where they are, uh, will generate substantial returns for us. Uh, again, very low risk. Um, the Mafrak, the Oman um, asset, we added that at the end of 2020. This is a uh, delineated uh, heavy oil field. Again, also right smack in the middle of Oman. Uh, and that is something that falls into our 40% risk profile where uh, this is something that has been discovered by somebody else. We will take the executional risk. 
Last but not least, we have the Tartaruga field going back to Brazil. Uh, this is um, also in the 40%, maybe part of it is in the 10%. It's a very uh, highly structurally uh, um, complex field. Uh, we're currently producing uh, uh, um, high quality oil from that. And the idea is to take that through horizontal drilling uh, into uh, about 2,500 barrels of oil per day. Again, uh, 2P uh, is, is quite sizable there, about 12.6 million barrels. Before I hand over to uh, the next speaker, we wanted to just to touch on a few uh, uh, subjects uh, I saw, Theodore, you prepared. So I thought I'd address COVID-19. Um, it has impacted us in three areas, obviously on a global scale. Um, the oil price has impacted us in terms of revenues. Uh, if we go, then break it down to a country basis, we've had problems with logistics and movements of personnel. And third, but not least, of course, we've had direct impact by people falling sick. Uh, we've had two people hospitalized. Total of 12 uh, employees have been confirmed as, uh, as COVID uh, positive. The graph at the bottom really shows the correlation of Brent oil price versus uh, three Stockholm-based um, um, oil and gas producing companies. So with that, uh, I look forward to an interesting discussion. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction, Jonas.